Okay, um, getting the session underway, Automated Collections and introducing to um, our panelists for today. I'm, my, I'm Hayden McCall, I'm Managing Director at, at iStart in, in Auckland and uh, facilitating the session today. We've promoted and got the word out, um, as have um, the team at ESCA. Um, Scott Walkinshaw is uh, our, our business panelist today. Um, Scott's CFO at Free, Frio Crane Hire. Um, he has got a pretty significant business in, in um, large equipment um, hire um, and has to keep uh, chasing um, a, a, a range of clients um, in terms of their um, payables performance um, and has implemented ESCA recently, along with the help of Eric. Eric, I haven't even asked how I say your last name, so I'm not going to, you can say that, um, who runs the AR solutions um, at ESCA ANZ um, out, out of Sydney. G'day guys. Morning. Good day, morning. Um, I should say, Scott's based in Perth, obviously. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, Auckland, absolutely. So we're, we're, <laughs> we're, cover, we're covering the the, uh, the the time zones. All right, so we'll get on with um, this is all being recorded. A link will be linked to the recording will be sent out. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, and very keen to hear from the audience. If you do have questions, um, these guys, uh, we've got to have time at the end um, to answer. Sure, we're sort of aiming 30 to 40 minutes, um, reasonably open-ended. If, if questions come up, then, um, then we'll keep going. Okay, so... Um, Scott, if you could just give us a, a little bit of a you know big big picture background of what Frio is is all about. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Hayden. Uh, good morning, afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, for making the time today. Um, so, just a, a bit of background about Frio Group. So, Frio Group is headquartered in Perth and Western Australia, but we're a national crane service provider. Um, we're in pretty much every state and territory in Australia, with the exception of Tasmania and South Australia. We run a crane fleet of about 450 cranes. We have about 1,300 employees, give or take, on any given day. And our turnover is about 280 to 300 million. Um, we have a huge number of customers. So we've got about eight to 900 customers. And the, the big thing for us driving the, the implementation of ESCA was just managing those customers in a more efficient way. Um, we, we were using outdated technology. We were using our, our ERP, which wasn't doing it. We were using Excel, which wasn't doing it. So we needed something else to, to, to help us manage the sheer volume. Um, we have invoices rate ranging anywhere from you know, a couple of hundred dollars up to several million dollars. And there are literally tens of thousands of them produced every year. So we just need a, a better way to manage that and give my AR team back some time in their day. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, Eric, maybe just give, give us an overview of um, the, the ESC platform that we're talking about and, and then you know, the components that were implemented into, into Frio. Sure, um, and, and welcome everyone. Um, so yes, the ESCA platform actually, um, um, as, as you see on that slide, is not just about accounts receivable. Um, we actually uh, automate the full uh, cash conversion cycle. As you can see on the left-hand side, there's, uh, there's the procure to pay as you're, um, as you're ordering goods or services, uh, and then you're, you're getting invoices. Uh, we're helping with the automation of those processes, eliminating them manual task being more efficient in this in this process as well. And obviously here we fall today in the order to cash uh, aspect of this cycle. So starting with uh, the credit management, onboarding customers up to uh, then getting orders, processing orders into the system. And then obviously all the accounts receivable part, which is sending invoices, um, handling potential claims deductions. And, um, and then the, the, the modules that you see highlighted there, which we've, um, which Frio embarked on implementing is the collections management. So helping you with the collections uh, process to, and getting paid in the end. Uh, as you can see, there's also a module on the, which is called cash application, which helps uh, with the uh, reconciliation of um, your bank files, whatever you get paid, uh, processing the bank statements, remittances, uh, matching the extracting data of the remittances automatically, uh, matching those cash, uh, this cash that you get into the bank. So today we're going to focus more on the collections management and the journey uh, at, at, at Frio. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, and a little bit of more detail. And, yeah, a little bit more details that. about collections management indeed. So what, what, the, what the solution is about is really helping you um, automating what can be automated. Because there's a, there's a big part of the, of the, of the daily um, tasks and, and process at, uh, in, these, in the accounts receivable department, which is managing the customer uh, and, and, as Scott mentioned, keeping this relationship with your customer and so on. So all those tasks that come in your way that are manual and so on, you want that to be automated. So that's why uh, you, would, you would typically segment your customers 
and, and Scott will probably mention that you can segment your customers into different collections group because you don't want to handle your bad payers and good payers in a different way. I think uh, at, at, um, at Frio, they've got also VIP customers and so on. So for those, you would set up your different collection strategy. And in the end, you want that to be automated, like the sending of account statement, the sending of payment reminders based on the rules and, and how those customers typically pay you. You want that to be automated how you set up your collection call rules as well. So when is it time to call your customer, you know, uh, for those customers that are more risky versus the customers that typically pay on time and so on. So that's basically going to build up in the solution automatically a, a to-do list, a task for your team. So I know at Freo, as they come into the more in the morning, they log into the the system, they've got their tasks, they, they've got the messages as well. Everything is centralized, receiving the solution so they can go onto there, answering all those um, emails and, and that, that came from customers, but also they have their to-do list, who they have to call and so on. So uh, helping them with the prioritization and what, what to do. Uh, collaborating with other departments is also a key, uh, key aspect um, that happens during the collections process because you want to keep on top of, manage, uh, of, uh, of managing those customers. And the relationship with customers is also, I uh, know with Freo at some branches with some sales or accounts, uh, account executives looking after the customers. So you want to get them involved, collaborate, so you can create mm -hmm. tasks, ask them. Uh, okay, so Scott, uh, to talk a little bit about, um, oh, sorry, I, I didn't do the, the slide, but <laughs> you've, pro you've probably covered all of that. She's got these fancy transitions in the uh, automation in the in the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, okay, so so Scott, talking about inside your business and your experience with um, with, with implementing ESCA, um, and how that's gone. Yeah, so um, Eric's touched on many of these things, but perhaps I can explore them in a bit more detail. So for us, the communication piece is really important, not just communication between us and our customer, but communication with our branch staff. Um, as Eric mentioned, a lot of our branch relationships, sorry, a lot of our customer relationships are owned at a branch level. So we've got 23 branches across the country and it can be challenging for the accounts receivable team to necessarily make contact with the right person at the customer that needs to resolve a, a credit management issue. So often we have to filter those back to the branch to say, hey, there's a credit due here or the customer's got a question on this invoice or they need some backup for this documentation. So the wonderful thing about um, TermSync, as, as the tool is called, is we can manage that communication, not just outbound to our customer, but internally within our team. And we can assign tasks and send reminders to other team members and they can communicate directly back with us. And it's all linked back to that customer account, back to that invoice number. All the information is stored inside the tool. Um, they don't need to have access to the tool and the training is very, very simple, but we rolled that out very quickly and we embedded it as deeply within our business as we could. So all of our branches now talk about ESCO or talk about TermSync as just another tool of trade. So the next step there is the automation piece, which Eric also touched on. So we used to do um, manual reminder letters and manual collection letters and manual statements, and it was all really challenging and all very hard. Now we've got the rules set up within the TermSync tool. And when customers hit those gateways, the system automatically sends um, the first couple of letters out. And then anything that needs to go into a, a formal collection process is managed manually. But um, statements are sent out in an automated fashion. Customers can come back to us, query statements, request copies of invoices and all that sort of thing within the tool. So that's great. Uh, the next one is the credit limit alerts. So we always had trouble managing credit limits for customers. So we wouldn't often know that a customer exceeded their credit limit until several months later because our old collection um, processes weren't, weren't that good. Whereas within the ESCA tool, the credit limits are there on the dashboard so the guys can open it up. It's one of the first things they see every morning and they have an action there to address things. You know, Go back to the customer and say, hey, is this a temporary extension? Is it a permanent extension? What do we need to do to manage that? The, the, the customer segmentation is another important point. Um, as Eric talked about, you don't want to treat all your customers the same. So we have some very large blue chip miners um, and some large uh, EPCM contractors that we, we work with. But we also have the small mom, mom and dad uh, companies and we have some high risk customers that perhaps need a bit more active attention. And they're all segmented within different groups and we can treat them all differently, set up different collection rules for them um, and, and, and manage them on the individual basis they need. Um, the next bit I've kind of already talked about in, as, as well, and that was about having the visibility, not just within the AR team, but at the branch level and at a general manager level. So all of our managers, all of our branch administrators, all of our general managers have access to the tool. 
Um, they've got pre-built reports, which we help them all build, and they can go up, go in and open the tool and have a look at their branch or their region or a specific customer, and they can manage things actively day to day. So it's not just relying on the AR team to do it. We actually now have credit management happening at all levels of the organization. The, the calling patterns and the prioritization, again, that's all set up within the tool. So we've set up the call rules, um, you know, which calls need to go out today. We've got some customers that get reminders just prior to their invoices being due. We have other customers that get calls just after their invoice is due if they haven't paid and a whole different um, other, other rules in there as well. And some of those call rules can be managed again at a branch level. So if a, if a branch happens to talk to a customer about a credit management issue, they can log into the tool, make a quick note, and that gets registered as a call. So all that information is there. If anyone wants to go back and say, what's the history on this customer? It's all listed there very simply. Um, I guess the biggest thing is the, the, the reduction in day to days. So um, days outstanding was a significant problem for us. We have customers ranging in terms from 14 days all the way through to 90 and some customers are 120 days. So to manage cash flow for us, we just need a bit of visibility. And that's what this tool has given us. That's the primary thing that um, the primary benefit we've got out of it is a bit of visibility of where each individual invoice is, where each individual customer sits, and overall holistically where the, where the group sits. Um, and there's some other functions there on promise to pay. Um, there's, there's, you can set up payment plans for customers. There's not really anything that we face on a day-to-day -day basis that the tool can't do for us. And Eric and his team were fantastic at really you know, getting into our business and understanding what it was we needed and making it work for us in the way we need it to work. So that's the, the basic summary. And this has all come from my team. I didn't do this. My team gave me these points. So they are singing the praises of this tool all yeah. day every day. Well, there you go. Eric, there's, there's your entree to, to, to talk to uh, the, some of the KPIs that come through um, on the dashboard. Yeah, yeah actually, that's one of the, um, that's one of the uh, executive uh, dashboard there. Um, there are a few different dashboards helping you to monitor uh, your, the performance of your collection strategy. Uh, uh, like here, we see um, the evolution of the collection effic efficiency index, the DSOs, the total past um, due um, at the month hand, how much was disputed and so on. So that helps you understand, have I set up correctly my collection strategy? Is my, doing, is my team doing, doing uh, the, the right thing as well? So. Yeah, cool. Uh, I just just to remind it, um, the audience, uh, if you've got any questions, just please do fire them up. I'm just in the Q and A pane. I'm just opening that up, so uh, distracting myself here. Uh, yeah, just get those questions through, just so I can um, address them either as we go or uh, at the end. Okay, next up, uh, this is another another one of the dashboard uh, reports. Yes, and uh, and I, I mean Scott can can talk also and jump in, but here that's that's drilling into the details. So um, the the previous one was more the trend over the month, uh, like uh, that you can see over the year or the two years, and how your how your collection strategy with comparison month to month as well, how you're performing. Some businesses have. Uh, you know, have seasonal activities and want to compare how they do with the, with the previous year, for example. So this one is more drilling into the detail and how you're performing on your DSO and so on, but also on, the, on your team. Uh, I, know, uh, I know Scott's team is very keen on understanding we, part, of a, part of the process with Esker is after, after you, go, you go live, we have regular actually calls. There's a customer experience program that is uh, that is happening with uh, with us so that we help the team actually drive the most benefit out of the solution and during those calls we review also how they're using the system and so on giving advices so here the collection calls i know is something that scott's team like to 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 to, to look at how they're performing in terms of the number of calls that they're completed you know, are they on top of those calls that they have to make with customers and so on? Also, another indicator that is not there is the number of responses they made. So mm -hmm. each time they log in in the, in, the, in the morning in the system, they see responses or questions from customers that they might have asked mm -hmm. um, because they replied to an email uh, or, um, or, um, or uh, logged onto the portal and raised a question. And I know they like to be on top of that and keep it a hundred percent within the, within the a good time mm -hmm. frame there. Yeah. And that's a good point, Eric. That's a, a key focus for my team is, you know, they like to challenge themselves 
you know, the number of calls they close out, keeping it within a, you know, at a good level. So the, the first thing they do is check the number of calls that need to be made that day. And their goal is to clear those each and every day. It doesn't always happen, but it's certainly you know, one of the key focuses. And I think the, the fact that the customer can communicate with us through this tool is fantastic. So it means that they can actually, you know, when they get their statement or they get an invoice, they can respond and we can see exactly what it is they're querying because we're looking at the same thing they are. And one of the things that's also really useful is we can switch the view. So if we want to see what the customer sees, there's a little button in the tool where you can change the view and it switches to the, the customer side of the view. So if they've got a query on something and we can't quite understand it, we can almost sit in the customer's shoes and go, okay, now we see what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And I see their uh, collection effectiveness index, otherwise known as the CEI. Has is that is it, uh, been useful? Uh, and what does, it, what does it mean? Um, look, well, for, for me, it's the DSO. That's the key thing I yeah. focus on. Um, but maybe Eric can talk more about the collection effectiveness index because um, it, it, it is a metric, not one that we use that much, but it's, it's obviously there for us to compare across periods. Yes, and the, the collection effectiveness index is actually calculated to show how much the team collected out of what is collectible. So that means the higher and closer to 100%, it means you you manage, if you're hundred person, you manage to collect everything that you could collect basically, or that could be paid and so on. So, uh, I mean, here 95.8 is an excellent result. Uh, most, uh, most of the customers, they actually go and, and, and increase this collection effectiveness in index over time using our solution and uh, have a goal initially of, you know, reaching 80% and then they, you know, as they go, they can increase and get their team a bit challenged to, to actually reach, uh, reach a bit better. Mm. Oh, well done, Scott. <laughs> okay, um, so I guess, and there's a little bit of there's a little bit of pretty yes, yes slides here, but um, it, just from your perspective, Scott, going, you know, if you're giving giving advice going into this again, um, what were the key things that that you know within the, the overall makeup that were um, things that you were really focused on? Well, I think for me, it was about um, moving away from spreadsheets because you know the the collections module within our ERP wasn't great. It didn't capture things at a granular detail. You had to always keep going in and, and, and clicking through various screens to get to where you wanted. So we wanted something almost a single pane of glass. So there were dashboards that were there. Um, you could easily drill down by clicking on links as opposed to having to open up a diff different screen and type in a customer name or an invoice number again. So I wanted something that was a bit more um, intuitive to use. So it had to be you know, a Windows-based platform which this is. Um, and the other thing was having as much supporting information behind it as possible, even down to getting you know, an invoice level detail. So instead of just seeing an invoice summary, they could click on an invoice and actually open the invoice. So we spent a lot of time working with Eric and his team so that they understood what we needed. And to be honest, the challenges we had were mostly caused by us and our, and our um, complications. So it was trying to get our, our data into a format that fitted with the ESCA upload. So the way it works for us pretty simply is every night our system creates a file which is saved in FTP location. ESCA polls that location and as soon as it sees a file, it picks it up and uploads it. Um, so it gets a customer file, an open AR file and also a banking file for that day. And then in the background, it sucks all that information in and it displays it you know, in a nice pretty graphical format to us. Um, if we have to do that via spreadsheets, it means we need to open each of those individual files. We've got to do, you know, lookups and pivot tables and all that sort of stuff. So for us, um, you know, it was just being able to convert our data into a format that ESCO would accept. And it took us quite a few iterations. Um, but again, that was more on our side because of some of the additional things. We wanted things like credit limits in there. We wanted all the various uh, customer payment dates in there. Um, I think, you know, if I was to go through this process again, um, for me, it would be about making sure the data is clean. Um, we had to do quite a bit of cleanup work just to get our, our um, customer file correct. We have multiple customers with the same ABN number because there might be customer A at site A, customer A at site B, customer A at site C. But they've all got the same ABN number. So that provides challenges to, to, to ESCA and the way it works. But, um, you know, we've found workarounds for all those things. So I think that the biggest thing that people need to be prepared for is, you know, try and get your data cleansed and that will help you automate the process as much as possible. Eric, any any comments on that? I, I probably we skipped through. Yeah, maybe maybe you know talk a little bit about the methodology you use going into into projects to bring these things to the fore. 
Yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward uh, to, to, to set up the, the solution with us. Um, I mean, following the kickoff, it's really about data file integration, as Scott touched on this. It's really getting the data into, the, into our solution. Um, I, know, I know some companies might wonder, oh, yeah, I can do things with my ERP, but ERP has its limitations. So at some point, every day you end up, you end up doing reports, you might have some report, but then you're exporting spreadsheets, you do things and so on. So here the data, once the data is, in, is synchronized every day with, with our solution, it's automatically in, in your aging, there's an aging graph with buckets, there's reports showing, and then the, those reports are automatically predefined there and, and it's all organized and set up in the solution. So this data file integration can take more long, more or less mm -hmm. long, depending on what data. Some customers get it right straight away. And in like, we've done some implementation within like 10 days, the customers were giving the data and uh, with, and then there can be some back and forth so to adjust because there can be some custom fields that can be brought in so that you can display, I don't know, your branch or we have customers do, uh, who is in the logistic, they want to see, uh, I don't know, containers numbers or job numbers and so on. So it's all configurable this, but after it's pretty straightforward. Once we have the data in our system, we train the team. It's a very um, straightforward training there. Um, once you're ready and you validated the data is ready in your solution, we, we go live. And that's a soft go live. You don't have to straight away communicate with your customer. It means you can use the tool. You're starting setting up your collection strategy. And typically the, the, the go live is actually a phased approach. That's I think what we did at, at Prio. They selected a group of customers to start with releasing some account statement payment reminders to see how customers were reacting. And then they opened it to um, to more and more customers to finally onboard all their all their customers. Mm. Mm. And sorry, the it, other it, thing, it, probably it, sorry, Hayden, that you, just you want can. to touch on something else that, that, that Eric mentioned. I think you know the other shortfall with using ERPs is you don't always want to give access to these modules in the ERP because there's, there should be might be security concerns or that sort of thing there. With ESCA, because there's different levels of permissions, we can give access to everyone in the organization. And it means that you're not having to run reports to send to specific people. Um, you can control what they see and how they see it um, all through, again, that, that single pane of glass and having the one tool. So I think that's the real strength for us. It's a, you know, it is a dedicated collections management tool as opposed to an ERP, which is trying to do all things, not just one thing. And I would add the ERP actually, actually also, I mean, does not always allow other teams to collaborate mm. in, in C, but also your customers. I mean, the customer portal, obviously, the ability of having a cloud solution like ours and having this customer built in, it means your customer can really easily access. I mean, whenever yeah. they receive an account statement or payment reminder, they just click on the link, it gives them, it takes them to the portal and they can see their, 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 their mm -hmm. solution, which... Yeah. yeah. So, Scott, you, see, you mentioned before it's a Windows-based, but it's a fully browser-based... Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question I was going to ask is, um, just you, you're talking there about um, the the collection strategy set up and production, you, and you, you talk about um, you know pay, payments histories and classification of of, of um, your, your customers. Are there any sort of AI algorithm type assistant tools, wizards that help you to do that? Uh, are they needed? You know, was it something that sort of you kind of naturally knew, Scott? How much work was involved in doing that? Look, for us, and you know, Eric can talk about some of the technology solutions, but for us, we know our customers intimately, and it was pretty simple. We had a couple of major groups. We had our VIP customers, which we, we knew, and we wanted those pulled out from the letter process so they weren't getting collection letters because we know how to manage them. Um, we had our, our um, I suppose, bad or doubtful debts customers, which we wanted very active management of. And then we had a few other little groups and then just everyone else. So it wasn't actually too hard to segment. But again, that was just our business. So I'm sure for other businesses, there, there are other methodologies that, that are needed. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, there they are some other ways with our tool as well uh, to, to monitor that and potentially switch customers from another group. Uh, one of the AI tools, I mean, we analyze payment behavior. So whenever we know a customer pays, um, we know which day of the week they pay, how late they pay typically, and so on. So we can calculate a risk level. So if this, the customer pays, for example, five days late, but always pays five days late, then we know it's a kind of a becoming kind of a normal behavior, right? 
But as they start paying six days, seven days, or eight days, you know, late, then we change. So we augment the risk there, and you can have reports based on that, which means you can straight away in your task list monitor those customers and then you can decide what to do it's very easy then to run a report say actually those risky customers now i'm going to switch them to a different collection strategy and there's also collection forecast that exists as well there's a there's a report where we we know when customers are likely to pay you so how much cash you're likely to get on a certain on over the next 30 days based on this payment behavior but also based on the promise to pay, because as you log in calls, you can set a promise to pay, it's re recorded in the system so that you know exactly what to expect there. And there's follow-up calls that can be made if the customer doesn't pay. Um, at Freo, they are not using the online payment uh, tool. There's a capability to enable online payment as well to, uh, so that your customer also can schedule the payments but also be activated on what we call an auto pay, which is kind of a direct debit. So when comes the due date, it automatically direct uh, debits their card or their account uh, so that it automatically pays. So this is also taken into account in the scheduling and the forecasting so that you know basically you're on top of expected cash flow and uh, that, that in, in the, through, through our system. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so, so Scott, how's it gone? Customers, uh, from their perspective, they feel as if they've been roboticized and have this uh, automation looking after their relationship, or, or has it been a seamless, they love it and, and, and uh, appreciate the, the visibility they get? Oh, look, Hayden, you can never keep everyone happy, but <laughs> um, certainly it was within a matter of days of going, so we did a soft go live as Eric suggested, and we ran it for a couple of months, sent some statements, and you know, the guys were playing with in the background, setting up the strategy. But when we actually did the go live with customers and it became customer facing, I think we started getting inquiries within the first day or so. Customers actually feeling comfortable enough to use the tool and go, you know, send us a message through the tool. And that level of activity has just continually increased and increased. We haven't had anyone come back and, and really get upset about it. We often get the odd query, oh, what's this is legitimate, which is perfectly understandable in this day of increased um, you know, cyber security activity. But no, I think generally it's been fairly well received. And, and look, you know, some customers will love it, some customers will hate it, but we don't do it exclusively. They can, they can still email, they can still call us. We still communicate in the ways we always have. This is just another method, another tool just to help the guys be more effective. We're not trying to replace it and take away the the personal service that we give to customers. We just have it there for people that are comfortable to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, good stuff. Um, so you know, we talked a little bit about um, ERP integration, but what was involved in MYOB Green Tree, you guys are, yep. are running um, just to, maybe just a little bit more granular detail in terms of what, what are you, what are your um, needs? How hard is that? And you need, do you need an integration consultant in there? Or, or I guess it's a matter of you, what your internal capabilities are versus an ESCA yep. team coming in? You know, look, the internal capability for us wasn't too bad. So uh, my team did, did most of the work. The AR team, you know, we sat down as a team and mapped out what we wanted from the tool. And I let them very much guide. You know, I said to them, what is it you need to be more efficient? And they came back to me with a list of requirements. Um, Eric and I discussed it. And he said, okay, this is what you need to do. And he gave us the, the templates and everything. And we sat down with, um, I've got a team of analysts who, who support the, the, the various systems we have and just said, okay, cool, build me this report. So they just built that report that runs out of Green Tree every night. It's a pretty simple CSV query. It's nothing too complex. And then we worked on you know, the customer um, and then the banking file came a couple of months later. But as I said before, it's, it's pretty simple. The reports are scheduled to run every night they just get saved in a location. Um, ESCA polls that location, picks them up when they're available and just uploads the data. So we have it running every night. So in the morning when the guys come in, the data from the previous day is there. So we're never any more than 24 hours behind. And we can obviously do that more frequently if we choose to, but we're comfortable doing it on a daily basis. Oh. Yeah. No, nothing, nothing to add, really. Uh, yes. <laughs> no. no. Scott, Scott, is, Scott is right. There are some customers who are doing... Um, um, who are doing this uh, this synchronization uh, more often? Uh, we have a customer doing it during the night, then midday, then three p.m. I think it's also to do whenever they do uh, the allocation of their cash in their ERP, uh, then they want to reflect the the situation straight away during the day in their um, in in our solution. But 
um, yeah, most of our customers actually are on a daily basis, um, and and they set up the the collection strategy based on that. So it's uh, it's mm-hmm. pretty straightforward integration. Uh, CSV file is um, has proven to work pretty well there. Uh, are easy to produce from an ERP perspective for your uh, really the open AR just contains your list of open invoices and credits. Customer contacts are typically the contacts, email information, telephone numbers that you would need to for our solution to um, to organize the, the, the to, to send the reminders account statement and get in touch with your customers. Um, and the invoices are, are nice to have and load into our system so that your customer can access these invoices through the customer portal, view them, and so on. Um, and you can also, um, the, the, the team can, or the AR team can also resend those invoices very easily. So you can make a report, have a bulk messaging that would automatically attach invoices and send and spread those invoices automatically to customers. So. Mm. Yeah, and then optional files can be discussed. It's uh, it's additional files, but it's mm. nice to have as well. So that's your, your typical implementation. I see web services and Escalator tool, other alternatives. Yeah, in in the case of Freo, we did the SFTP. So they just pushed the file um, on, on the SFTP that we pull. Uh, we can um, the Escalator tool is just another way where we can ourselves go and get this CSV file at your end and, and load it into our system, but. SFTP is mostly used in, in the case of all this integration. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. Uh, any questions, folks, just get, get them in. We're, we're sort of coming to, to um, the, the end of uh, the, the sort of formalized part of the presentation. Um, so benefits of automating collections, uh, the, this is just, just this runs in uh, Blurbage. So I, I know between the, the two of you just, I guess, talk to um, <laughs> which ones are the key ones you re- reduced to DSO. Obviously, Scott, you've you've uh, focused it. I think that's it. I think that's, I think that's <laughs> the, the flash bit done. Um, but it, 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 you guys talk, talk to that. Um, obviously, a pretty positive experience, um, Scott. No, absolutely. And, you know, for me, I, I didn't really know where to go. And um, I reached out one day to the Australian Institute of Credit Management and I said, look, this is this is the problem I have. What are you aware of that can help me? Because our ERP doesn't do it and we need something that does. And they gave me two names and Esker was one of them and they were the first people I called and Eric and I had a good chat and he just kind of got it. And that's, I suppose, the one thing that I just stick to all the way through this process is the team gets it. They understand what our business faces, even without understanding the detail behind it, you know, because they've seen this before. So, you know, they could come along on the journey and they weren't trying to sell me a, a, a tool. They were trying to give me a solution to solve my problem. And, you know, the more we talked, the more the, the solution evolved and, hey, we can do this with it now, we can do this with it now. And my team runs with it. I have very little involvement nowadays other than reviewing reports. You know, my team is, is talking to Eric's team. Virtually, I don't know, Eric, what, every couple of weeks or so saying, hey, can we do this? Can we do that? What if it does this? What if we do that? You know, there's a lot of um, us being proactive to make the tool just work harder for us. And, and, and that's, that's really what it's done. So I think, you know, that visibility on the process and performance, for me, that's the number one. The DSO is a fantastic um, byproduct of it, but that was not the key focus for us. It was about the visibility and the more, you know, better management, being more, um, the guys being more proactive instead of reactive all the time and just allows us to get better customer service. Because if you're, you know, sending your customers the invoices the right way on, on the right time, they're more likely to pay it and they have a, a better perception of you as a as a service provider. So, mm-hmm. all right, all good stuff. Um, thank you, guys. Um, I'll, I'll do a quick uh, quick thanks to to um, Eska for sponsoring today's event. Um, Eric's details uh, there if you want do want to get in touch. Um, there's a little bit of a uh, an overview here of ooh, another <laughs> another fancy slide. Yes. Um, <laughs> just just of Eska's uh, global footprint. So um, you know ability to support and he'd been around for a few years, right, Eric? Um, yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there's, a, there's a global network and and a pretty pretty significant number of customers across all sorts of verticals. So absolutely, yeah. yeah. We've been in Australia since '97, actually. Um, uh, but Asker has been 35 years old. I, I come from the HQ. I've started not 35 years old, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> 
but uh, but in between, <laughs> French but, yeah, business, right? I've worked between uh, between France and uh, and Australia, back to France, back to Australia. So yes, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a global uh, company. We've got um, very very large company and corporations uh, um, worldwide and global, uh, up to our smaller uh, businesses and so on. Uh, I think our solutions are here to address actually every every type of companies and so on. And and yeah, our, our goal is to help and embark on the journey on the partnership because yeah, there's there's other solutions. I mean, our solutions keep evolving. I think one of the benefits as well is we keep bringing new features and so on. So I know we're pretty flexible and, and to work with companies like Frio looking at their their requirements and their needs as well to potentially you know adapt and bring new features that would benefit all our customers. So we like to hear about our customers embark on the journey. I'm, I'm, I'm part of our implementation at the end there's this customer uh, management uh, customer success program I think that is very important that is quite unique at Esker where we actually continue the journey. Uh, we don't want just you to go live and then buy, you know, it's not, it's not our goal. Our goal is really to work with each company, make them successful, um, make them get the, the best, um, the best out of our solutions. And, uh, yeah. All right. Fantastic. Um, well, thank you folks for, for joining um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Bam Bam. I, that's, I, I named Bam Bam. That, that was just, he just needed a name, but um, he's part of a, an ebook um, that is around optimizing cash flow. It's kind of a post COVID view of, of optimizing cash flow. Um, Eska will send that out uh, to you following the event um, and uh, I'll be in touch with um, the recording. But uh, thank you for attending and thank you, Eric and Scott, for, for your insights you. today. And thank uh, you. all the best. Have good afternoons or mornings. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. To a close. Okay. Cheers. Bye bye.